in the world of men, we are known for being kind of rather, well, assholes, because we speak the mind that we have. We speak what the Lord God puts in our head. We tell people the truth, us soothsayers, the bairds of old come today. But women like to play. They actually plan these things to harm people. There is a black set of women who are deciding to harm someone. They somehow got information from a law enforcement officer across the state line who stalked, lied, and cheated someone all the time. And when he did that, he moved into a physical space. He walked into a drugstore and said, You will not give this medication, this hormone supplement, to this person ever, anymore. And we have support from the siblings of this person. Well, here's your first problem. Those siblings have no medical rights to a person. You see, what we have in the world is something called first-party rights and third-party rights. First party rights belong to a spouse, not a child. Third party rights belong to siblings and parents. What that means is that in medical documents that only a spouse, whether they are common law spouse, common law spouse, or a legally bound spouse, have rights to the individual if something goes wrong, if someone can't function. But what we also have are people who are signed in the case of emergency. And I chose me two women that I cared for the most in my life to be the, that person, that liaison, if I got to a point that I couldn't decide for me. Those two women do not belong in my biological family. They're not a part of my bloodline. They're not a part of my birth of origin. Because those two women were the most powerful women outside of my actual common law wife. And I'm just going to call it that because I don't think it's anyone's business, the legal aspects of a person's life. I also don't think it's anyone's opportunity to piss on someone because you feel like it. The monsters in the hood have been picking up a man's shirt while he's sleeping after being absolutely abused in a house of Satan, a sheriff's department, a jail of a community where the judge was a lying white bitch who thought she could get away with her own notoriety. Everything in the transcripts is clear, how she abused his rights, didn't do anything right, and how she used little girls who hadn't even finished law school yet to allegedly provide counsel and support to someone like me. But let's get back to the bitches of Satan the blacks of a community who ruin a life. They've been shaving a man in the night. They've been taking his clothing off him without permission. They've been sending their children to interfere, to create records for them in places like Carl and OSF and other organizations that have no fucking lawful rights to anyone that doesn't choose them. In the world of men and women, if we did a statistical analysis based on actual factual data of who lies and who cheats the most, what data do you think we would find? Do you think we would find it to be the foreign students that come to America not giving a shit about our laws or our lives? Do you think we'd find it to be the black women of a black community, technically black or African American, that do that? Or would we find it to be old, white men who have military pasts who are looking for something to be in power again? You see, in the life of God, he knows every living creature that he's got. But what he also knows is who are the people of God's house and who are not. People of God's house can mind each other. Minding each other is when someone is in a different state or a different mind or a different place away from a person of significance to their life. And if the person is very holy in that moment, completely and fully recognizing the soul of their friend or family, then the Lord can give a warning to that individual to pass along that love line. But if the individuals are of a birth family, and if the individuals are of Satan, 
And if the individuals are lying and stealing someone out of their property and their rights and their documents, then I guarantee they're going to end up by the end of the year with COVID. You see, COVID came from God. COVID was released by God through an individual. And COVID is taking lives around the world. America has spent a lot of time in the last few weeks using their international relationships to determine the current status of what's going on in those business and opportunities. You see, when there's a transition of, of, of employees, when there's a change of power, when we get rid of the joker of the hour and we bring in someone with integrity, there's always a risk. Because the risk is, I know what the hell I'm doing because I've sort of done it before. And the risk is not as great as the reward. But what we know about America is that we have a status in the world. And because of our status, everyone wants to be us, claim us, be involved with us, or send their children to us. And sometimes that's not good for America. You see, they've had generations, years to train their children to kill us. They have had years of abuse in their communities where they abuse sexually and unethically and unprofessionally and psychologically and emotionally their children. So what we get are warped citizens that come here to play here, lay here, and allegedly stay here based on lies. America must shut its borders today. America must clean up each community today. America must get back to the truth of our history and our heritage that we have fought wars, literally wars, in order to keep our borders safe. But when the Mexicans who come across the border illegally and immorally, and when the blacks of an African community don't do their jobs, and when the whites of a supremacist area of time and life don't get what's going on, we absolutely put our entire nation at risk. 